Uh, Rob, you mentioned Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. And here's what you, was talking, you were talking about. We know their last two games, I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They tanked. And um, they admitted it. Jason Kidd, the head coach, said before their second-to-last game when Kyrie Irving and three, four other key players were out and Luka Doncic was just playing a quarter and, and, because it was I Love Slovenia night. And you know what, Chris? That's the slap in the face, like – like to pacify those people, like they knew yep. they, they knew they couldn't like like not have them play at all. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the disgrace of it. If you're trying, what are you putting them out there for? But they knew that they sold tickets on the pretense yep. of him playing, and just I also think Rob just that. I mean, it was I love Slovenia night. Why are you even having that? Because your best player right. is Slovenian, so you had to put him out there for a quarter. At least, but you're right, Rob, and there's no doubt about it. That was just added more insult to injury. And um, Mark Cuban was fined $750,000 by the NBA. What they called it was conduct detrimental to the league. Rob, yeah, I first, read, let's I read start Joe here. D's quote, and that quote was spot, spot on. Did you see it, Chris? Yes. And, and I about, think that was key. right. Here it is. The Dallas Mavericks decision, this is Joe Dumars, yep. the NBA's executive v- VP of basketball operations. The Dallas Mavericks decision to restrict key players from fully participating in an elimination game last Friday against Chicago, here's the key phrase, Rob, undermined the integrity of our sport. Spot on. And he said he let down our fans – and failed he let fans fail, and, and our failed league. our league. I mean that that's spot on. There's no other way of looking at it. Nobody want you cannot do that, Chris. When you're uh, mathematically still in, involved, I mean we we saw said it. If you're eliminated, then I get it. No right. one's going to push back if you're eliminated. But the idea that you have players of that caliber and you're throwing in the towel that's disgraceful. It just it, it, is. And, and some people might say, "Oh, that's strong." No. It's disgraceful. Period. And, and Rob, I don't want to, let's not, and I know you weren't, but just for the listeners, I don't want to gloss over this phrase, undermine the integrity of our sport. What is the difference between the NBA and the WWE? There you go. Chris, that, that just... The integrity of the sport, right? You're spot on because once... You start finagling and and altering real competition and not a script as a WWE. You have pro wrestling if you start doing that. The integrity of the game is the most important thing. Pete Rose got banned because of that, Chris. You're a manager. You got a big bet on the game, and you're you're managing because you you don't want to lose. Yep. I got a double header tomorrow. I'm blowing out my bullpen because I'm trying to win today. Do you mess with the integrity of the game? Yes, you do. Absolutely. Ab- that is so critical. Critical. One, especially, Rob, in this day and age where the leagues are in cahoots with the gambling. Right. They're all supporting it, promoting the gambling. How in the world can you – you can't allow this. Nope. I, Rob, I thought he should have got more than 750 that's and, nothing and, and to you know, Mark Cuban. And you know nothing. what, Chris? How about, you're talking about the gambling aspect, somebody on the team finds out that those guys aren't playing before, you know what I mean? Like, yep. before the spread balloons oh, to, yeah. to minus to, to uh, uh, 17 or whatever it was, right. when the spread was, you still thought they were playing, and the spread was, you know, Dallas plus, Dallas minus six. Yep. And then when you find out they're not playing, it's Dallas minus 17. But you got yeah. in on the minus yep. six. You know you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. that's insider information. I yep. would call, if I was on the team and I found out they weren't playing or I knew the plan, I'd call my cousin. Make a big bet. They're Rob, not playing. You ex- Look, you, you speak no lies. I mean, this is serious. It should have been at least seven figures. And I know that that wouldn't hurt Mark Cuban either. Now, I mean, some some would say, well, could they have taken a draft pick? Uh, no, I don't think anybody would suggest that draft pick, the one they protected, you know, 
by keeping outside of the top 10, presumably. Um, but, or keeping it in the top 10, I should say. But um, you could have taken a draft pick. He, look, I, I would have been fine with a heft, heftier fine. And here's what I say, Rob. Look, we're not innocent. We're not naive. We're not Pollyannish about this. We understand that there were several teams essentially tanking, for lack of a better word, this season, right? San Antonio, they knew they weren't going to be any good. Utah, but what they did, San Antonio just had a roster, Rob, that was bad, right? The roster was bad. They went out there, they tried to win, those guys played as hard as they could, and they simply weren't good enough. When, when Philadelphia went through the process a few years ago that, that ended up getting them Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and others, they, for lack of a – they did it the right way. If you're going to go that route, you don't tell your team to go out there and lose. You don't tell your coaches we don't want to win. You just build a bad roster. And then they go out there and they try and they're just not good enough. Utah, Rob, Utah ended up being better than they thought they would, you right? You remember early in the but season, they are playing well. They are playing great. So what did Danny Ainge do? Did he tell his coaches, what they, look, you got to stop playing so-and-so and start losing? No, he traded them. Right. At the, at the deadline, he traded guys. They're, they're, too, they're too good. They're helping us win. We're trading them. And that, look, it's a business. You're trying to position yourself to get better picks. That's how it should be done if it's going to be done. Because you're still trying to win. I mean, the players on the court are giving their best. The coaches on the bench giving their best. Rob, that game, I don't know if you remember that, Dallas-Chicago a few a week or so ago. Dallas looked like they could have won that game. They were up six going into the fourth quarter. They led most of the way. Right, and then they fell. It was their bench players, and then they kind of fell apart. But did they fall apart? I, I don't remember if he started taking out the guys that were playing well or whatever it was, but it looked funny. It looked funny. They were doing whatever they had to do to lose that game. Sad. They were not going to say, man, we sat Luka and Kyrie and others – and still won, that wasn't even a possibility. And that's where it undermines the integrity of the game. You had one team go out there with the intention of losing. And you got to get hit hard. You, you, right. There's no way you can allow that to happen in the league. you got to be very careful. You just said it. You become pro wrestling, Chris. If, if people start wondering what they're watching is legit – Yep. Or, or you're trying to lose, or you're not putting in real effort. Like, that's the worst thing that can happen to a league. It's, it is. No doubt. No doubt. So, yeah, like I said, I thought a seven-figure fine was in order. Um, I wouldn't have, you know, been mad at the league had they taken a second-round pick or something, but it's fine that they didn't. But definitely thought the fine should have been heavier.